Here we go. Great. All right. Well, welcome and welcome, Evelyn. <laughs> um, very happy today to share information, um, of course, about PPH, but also um, with Brian Quigley and Mindy Haggerty of Keller Williams as our guest speakers today to talk about how do you sell a house, number one, just in general, tips to sell a home. But we have a lot of people that are fearful or unsure of how you would sell a house um, during these times when you don't want exposure to a lot of people in and out of your house. And I think with um, what we're learning now that we're in month five of, you know, of this pandemic is that we are able to do a lot of things we didn't know we could do with technology. Um, but before we get started with Brian and Mindy, I'd like to just give a brief overview of PPH. Um, let me, there we go. So PPH is a senior living community. And we call ourselves an all-in-one senior living community. You may have also heard of um, a continuing care retirement community. And what that basically means is that people move into a community like PPH, typically while they're independent. However, we also do have personal care, which is like assisted living or nursing care. So we do have some people that move in directly already needing some help. But a lot of our residents move in completely independent Many still drive and some even still work. And we actually have one resident that works here at PPH every day in our human resource department, but an active community. Uh, PPH is a not-for-profit community. And, um, you know, it's not to say a for-profit community is not a good community, but it's just a different way of operating. So a not-for-profit is just as it sounds, everything that comes into the community um, as far as, you know, entry fees and monthly fees goes right back into operating the community and improving the community. PPH is pretty unique in that we're um, celebrating 130 years this year. So we have a long history, very well known in the Philadelphia area. Uh, and then we offer, again, sen vibrant senior living for people 62 years of age or older. And the big benefit of a community like PPH is that even though you move in while you're independent, you're looking towards the future. So as you age and you need more care, it's all right here on the same campus and you don't have to worry. And that can even be a temporary stay, needing more care in either our personal care or nursing care and then going back home. So it takes away that one worry of what happens if I start to need more care. And as a not-for-profit community, we do have a mission statement. And, um, you know, our bottom line is our mission. It's not, you know, again, it's not profit or shareholders. Um, guided by Christian values, PPH is, um, our mission is to provide a caring community that affords our residents the opportunity to achieve their highest quality of life. And I'll also say that you do not have to be Christian to move in. Uh, we have a variety of religious backgrounds and it's funny, um, even though we started out mostly Protestant, um, you know, the, the joke is that we have more Catholics living here and we have a growing Jewish population. And um, so it's really neat to see all of the different backgrounds in the community and all the different spiritual services that we provide. Our independent living, uh, we have 256 apartments in three different buildings. And we have ranges from studios all the way up to very large two bedroom, two bath apartments. So we have a nice variety. Uh, what we're doing in certain situations is we can also combine smaller apartments to create larger ones. So we're always looking for ways to, um, to improve what we have here and also to customize and to keep up with what people are looking for. A lot of our apartments come with either a patio or balcony. So why do people choose to move to a community? That's a question that uh, we hear from a lot of people, especially as people are looking they often have difficulty in figuring out when is the right time. And that makes sense because you're moving in while you're independent. But I can tell you the top three, in my opinion, I've been doing this for 25 years, the top three reasons why I see people moving, social. That is number one. Um, I think with this pandemic also, I've heard from a lot of people, especially people living alone, that it's, it can be lonely. And even though we're practicing social distancing and we haven't had, 
you know, communal events and dining since this, pretty much since this began, you still do have a sense of community and can see other residents out on campus. Um, no worry of upkeep of a home. So that is big for people. Um, roof repairs and snow shoveling and leaky faucets. Um, not having to worry about the upkeep of a home is a big one. And, and Brian and Mindy, I know that you probably hear that all the time when you go into people's homes. Um, you get to a point where people are done. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yep, absolutely. And peace of mind. You know, so many people that are moving into communities, they have been through caregiving with a family member, maybe a spouse, and they see that, um, you know, if you don't have a plan, if you're not already set up with a plan, you end up in an emergency situation. And, you know, I've taken calls recently from friends and parents of friends from high school that know what I do and, and they're in an emergency situation with a family member. And that to me just highlights the, you know, the importance and really just the, the really well planned for people that tend to age well because you already know what will happen if something does happen. And also safety and security. You know, I've heard a lot of people lately, we've, you know, had a lot of unrest in general and, you know, people are, are feeling less safe. You know, it's, there's a lot that has been going on in the world and I know our residents are um, happy that they're safe and secure here at PPH, that they have people here looking out for them. Fitness and wellness, I always like to do a special, um, special slide or two about our fitness and wellness program. It is just so wonderful here. It's open to all of our independent personal care, skilled nursing, all of our residents. So we have different types of classes and equipment depending on a resident's ability. Um, all classes are included. Uh, we, we haven't had our gym open since this began, but we are hoping soon to be able to open some of it. We've been doing outdoor exercise classes um, and also streaming some classes into our residents' apartments. But everything is included once we're fully open again. Um, and we're also, again, when we're fully open again, we're partners with the outside community. And we do love to have the outside community in. Uh, Silver Sneakers Prime and Silver and Fit. Um, so if that's in your insurance plan, we do uh, welcome those people into PPH. And we hope to welcome them again in soon. We have a heated indoor pool, cardio equipment, strength training equipment. And something I always like to point out, not many communities have, we have two bowling lanes. <laughs> so um, not only can residents use those, but they're great for family parties, you know, once we can start those up again. Okay, and services. So a lot is included and what's not included can be added uh, at a reasonable cost. Um, scheduled transportation to local shopping, medical appointments, business services, if you need to send a fax or buy a book of stamp, stamps, maintenance, uh, groundskeeping, 24 hour security. A lot of those things are included as well as cable and internet. And then additional service such as housekeeping and laundry, those can all be added if a resident wanted to. And then care, you know, this is the last thing I'll touch on. Again, the benefit of a community is when and if you need care, it's available in the community. Uh, personal care is similar to assisted living where residents get assistance with things like bathing, dressing, medication management, you can't quite live independently, but you don't need skilled nursing care. Um, and then we do have skilled nursing care, which is 24 hour skilled care. We have residents that live there long term. And then we also have people there short term. So maybe you're getting a hip replacement or recuperating from an illness or injury. You could go there, get your therapy, and then go back to your apartment. And we also have people from the outside community that utilize our rehabilitative services as well. And then lastly, we have memory care, which is a, really a specialized type of care, different than any other kind of care with different programming and different staff that help those residents affected by Alzheimer's or other types of dementia. The benefits of a community, I would say these are the, reason, these are the reasons in my 25 years of doing this that I've heard from people, you know, what are the biggest benefits you see moving into a community? Assurance of future care, I do think that is one of the top reasons. You know, you're not worrying. Once you move in, you know what will happen. Um, peace of mind for you and your family. I've had many people who have told me that their family 
they consider that a gift to their family and loved ones. So they don't have to worry about them. And when they come to visit them, they're coming to visit them. They're not coming to complete a to-do list or you know, run mom or dad around to appointments, things like that. Control of where you will receive care and the availability of multiple levels of care. Okay, and then the last announcement, I did send a letter out to everyone that has inquired, but also for people that may not know, we have begun um, in-person visits again. Of course, in a safe manner, we're doing temperature checks on, on arrival and masks and um, a limited tour route, but certainly you get to see all of our common areas and a model one or two model apartments. Um, so we're excited about that. We've had many people that have been delaying a decision because they wanted to come visit. Uh, we have started mm -hmm. our independent living resident um, family visits as well in a safe way. So we're slowly getting back to, I guess you can call the new normal that everyone is trying to you know, get back to. Um, if anyone is interested in coming in, you can contact me, 215-214-6641, um, and also I'll have more information um, at the end of the presentation. And then we also are offering some limited time financial incentives. So I know that uh, as, as Brian and Mindy will, will discuss, the market has been really, um, really moving quickly, which is nice. I do believe there still is uh, more demand than supply, unless that's changed recently. Um, so I know it's a good time between selling a home and, and taking advantage of some financial incentives here, that it is a really good time to consider a move. And that is all I have. So I will um, officially introduce Brian Quigley and Mindy Haggerty of Keller Williams, and they have an exciting presentation. And Brian, I will make you a host so you can control the screen. Thank you. So you should be able to do that now. Perfect. Okay, well, uh, thanks so much, Shannon and um, EPH and your staff for having us today. And thanks, Evelyn, for being here as well. Um, what I love about this technology is that with a couple clicks of the mouse here, we can share our screens and we can bring to not just what we're doing here today, but in a recorded session, we can bring this information to everyone. So let me just start here from the beginning of our slideshow. So I'm Brian Quigley and I'll introduce Mindy Haggerty. Hi, I'm Mindy Haggerty. Hi, Evelyn. Hello. <laughs> so Mindy and I uh, teamed up about two years ago and we formed a team and we formed uh, Seniors Home Specialists. So that's exactly what we are. And we help uh, folks like Evelyn and folks who will be watching this uh, record later to navigate the current real estate market. But a little bit about Senior Real Estate Specialist and what we are and what that means and why the designation is so important. It's recognized by the National Association of Realtors. It's accredited towards a broker's license, which both Mindy and I are working towards, and we're about halfway there. So it takes about five years to become a broker. Uh, SRES is part of that accreditation, and eventually within probably another year or less, uh, we'll be brokers. And that's a little bit of a step above just a, a regular you know, sort of salesperson. So SRES also provides workshops and seminars on seniors issues, not just selling homes, but Medicare, Medicaid, VA benefits, long-term care insurance, things that will help you, you know, sell the house, move on to your new uh, PPH environment, and we'll understand some of those things. So it just gives us a better empathetic way of, of helping and understanding. It enhances our skills for power of attorney and for guardianship, executrix and executor sales. It enables us to work well with elder care attorneys. For example, if you had a power of attorney and they were kind of running the show for you, there's things that we have to put into the agreement for that. Or if there were a guardian who took over, again, we're skilled at uh, how to uh, structure the agreement of sale and protect our seniors. It encourages the value of trusted resource partnerships as well. And we'll touch on a slide later on that, uh, later on that, uh, an organization that we put together called PASC, the Professional Alliance to Help Seniors. So Evelyn, I'd love to ask this question of my seniors. And I'm wondering how many years you've been here. 50 years as of August 28th. Wow. Wow. 
That's awesome. So you're the over 30 years here on my slide. <laughs> so you win. <laughs> so that comes up a lot in, in most of our questions in sitting with a senior or doing a, a seminar. We say, you know, how many years have you been there? Uh, it's 50, it's 60. What sort of got Mindy and I into this years ago, and, and Mindy will touch on this too, is just a personal relationship, whether it was family or friends, and the realization how much help is needed. My uncle was in his home for 70 years. He was born there. Well, he was, yeah, he was born there. And at around 70 years old, we sold his house. It was my grandparents' house. And then Mindy, how about you tell your story of uh, your relationship that kind of got you into this as well? Uh, so mine started with my very first sale as uh, a brand new realtor. And um, uh, my first sale was, uh, uh, I think uh, Carol was about 83 and she wanted to move out of her 55 community and into a single home because she felt she was not old enough to be in the 55 plus. So, um, you know, I stepped in and, and we found her a home. She really wanted to be near her daughter and that was the goal and we figured that out and got her in. But, um, you know, d she had a daughter, but she needed a lot of help and that's, we became fast friends. We still, as soon as this is over, we're dying to have um, tea together. We always have tea at least once a month. And um, I just realized that, you know, there is a need and sometimes family can't fill the need. So, uh, you know, we became fast friends because we have a, it's, we kind of have a relationship once you start selling someone's home and helping them pack and going through their things. And it's, it's an emotional thing. So I fell in love with her and, and, and this business kind of went that direction. So that's kind of my story. <laughs> that's how I love to help seniors. And that really is kind of the core of what we do. Of course, we charge commission, of course, there's fees and things, but it really comes down to being an advocate and helping not just with the real estate, but a lot of other things too. So what type of market are we in today? So we are, uh, for the seniors benefit, in the best sellers market I've ever seen. And I've been in real estate since like 1989 with a license. I've done other things. I've always been either commission sales or self-employed. And about six, seven years ago, uh, decided with the seniors market to really focus on that. And as I said, two years ago, Mindy joined. So this is by far the best sellers market. There's basically two reasons for that, the inventory and the interest rates. So interest rates, uh, believe it or not, have dipped under 3% for a 30 year fixed rate. And that's never happened before that's never in happened the history before. of finance. Of finance. Uh, I think it was Alexander Hamilton. I think it was Alexander Hamilton. Somebody back in the day figured out if we could figure out mortgages, you could sell more real estate and that worked, right? And going forward, since the time of, of having mortgages for people, you've never seen rates this low, even adjusted down, you know, for inflation and for the value of money back then. So again, interest rates are about three to three and a quarter and inventory is extremely low. Mindy and I were on two listing appointments yesterday in Bucks County in 55 and up community. And these will be the only two out of about 700 homes that will be for sale when we list those. So that's extraordinary, two out of seven hundred. Philadelphia and Mindy Philadelphia and Mindy did a uh, search just recently for a client, which the zip code was near PPH. And if you want to speak to that inventory, Mindy. And yes. According to uh, the inventory from the MLS, uh, based on last year, I think the inventory is about 50%. And uh, the selling rate, I think the average price was one ninety nine. Last year, about two hundred this year, so um, yeah, definitely has increased. Um, for sure. yeah, both, both price and the inventory being low, so not only are seniors selling their homes quicker, but they're getting more money, mm -hmm. and and that's that's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the recent current pandemic, current pandemic accelerated it. It didn't accelerated slow it down. down. It, it didn't slow it down. It accelerated. So getting your home ready for sale. So getting your home ready for sale. Uh, what are the three things that kind of drive a sale of a home? It's location, condition, and price. And a lot of times seniors will say to us, well, what should we do? Should we repaint? Should we remodel? What are the things I should spend my money on? And in this current uh, situation of, situation uh, of and the climate and the of climate sales, of you really shouldn't sales, put your money into your home. You really should probably just look at paint or carpet and definitely a declutter, which we have resources for that, and a professional clean. Those are probably the four things. 
and you're not spending a lot of money. Maybe it's a few thousand instead of many thousands, and you really can't remodel your kitchen or bathroom to the taste of your new buyer anyway, because again, they're gonna probably be in that millennial age range, uh, 27 to maybe 47, maybe 40-ish. So they're gonna want their own thing, and I think you're just better off to really declutter, professionally clean, and maybe carpet and maybe paint, but that's a case-by-case -case study. And so a comparative market analysis is something that we do when we come out to your home. We show you the recent sales and we show you the condition of those recent sales. And then we overlay that to your home and say, well, if this home looks exactly like, like your home and it's sold for 200,000, that's probably about where you'll be in that 200,000. Now, if we look at all the houses and they're totally renovated, and they're let's say 250,000, but maybe you're at a 30 or 20 or $40,000 discount to the thing that they've done. The home. And HGTV shows how they affect buyers. So what that means is you'll see a lot of or love this house or list it, and you'll see a lot of current things. So that's kind of what the buyers are thinking. And when they come to buy your home as a condition, they may be looking to do that. Uh, to move forward with their choices. So in financing, there's really not a whole lot of things that a seller has to do to finance their home, but they can make use of the home equity line of credit. Meaning if you needed a few dollars to do the painting or to do the carpeting, this would be a perfect time to get a home equity line of credit. Again, their interest rates are around three and a half, four, four and a half. So very inexpensive money to spruce up or update the house to get it ready. Your buyers, on the other hand, are going to borrow most of the money to buy your home, probably anywhere from 80% of the money all the way on up to 95, 97% of the money. So they can put a 3% or a 5% or more down. They can also do the renovation loan, which helps them make it look like the HGTV home once they buy your home. A real important part on this slide is the cost. Is like, so what does it actually cost to so sell your home? The commissions, the commissions are, are they are uh, definitely they are, something uh, that you can negotiate you can with your agent. And it's anywhere from maybe 5 to 6%. There's no real set commission. So a lot of times, commissions, the agencies, the agencies will, will tell you there's a set you, commission. There's a it's set really commission. not. Transport, Transport tax in tax Philadelphia, unfortunately, in, Philadelphia, unfortunately, in the counties, in the it's counties, And generally, you split that. And generally, you split that. that and the buyer. Conveyancing fee is around $400, and that's for payoffs of things like taxes, uh, insurance. It just basically conveys the property, orders certifications like sewer and water. In Philadelphia, there's an L&I permit. It's around $102. You just pay that and sign off that your house is fine. And then you'll get a refund of your real estate taxes as well. So marketing, and this is one of my favorite slides and we added something new here. So we market by exactly how we figure out the price, the bright multiple list service. And that is where all the pictures go, where there's a really cool Matterport 3D tour that I'm gonna to show you in a few seconds too. And that all goes to the internet home sites, the Realtor, the Trulia, the homes.com, the Zillows, et cetera. We also have our own database of clients in our market center, which might bring you a buyer. So with this uh, slide here, I'll go back to Mindy for a second because I want to talk about uh, a client that she helped um, in Flower Town. And we sold the house, what, in uh, three, five days, Mindy? Oh, you're muted. Unmute yourself, please. I was trying to get rid of that reverb. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we uh, sold that house, I think, in two, we were under contract in two days with that one. So what we did was Brian will show you the tour and we were able to put this on a coming soon. So everyone was able to see that it was coming soon. And before it even um, went live, as we say, it had 30 some showings scheduled, but we didn't need all 30 showings. I think we only had, you know, 12 or 14 showings before we had an over, um, over list offer, uh, over ask. So we took that. Yeah, and that was a 20,000 over asking, asking. Um, offer. There were five offers altogether, I think you said, Mindy, and yep. it was like 18 showings. So that sounds like a lot, but 
in some cases, we've had 100 showings or 30 showings or 50 mm -hmm. showings. And I see Evelyn's kind of saying, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so Evelyn, I'm going to show you and show everyone else, all of our other seniors, how to get it to like 18 or 20 showings and make it easier on yourself. And that's exactly what happened in this case. So here is something that is called Matterport Technology. Matterport Technology. And let me just reload. Let me just reload. Actually, let me go to another Actually, link. Let me go to another okay, so this is okay. each so this is And what we have here is a three dimensional tour. Dimensional tour. And it drops you right into it. Right Where this helped us is that the buyers can see this 24 seven through their agent or through the websites and they can tour the home as if they're in the home. If you look at kids' video games today, this is kind of the same technology. So you're actually walking through the home like it's a video game. The difference is this is reality. This is what her kitchen really looks like. Mm -hmm. This is what it, her mudroom really looks like. Yeah. And as you can see, Evelyn um, and everyone out there, they're. There wasn't, she didn't need to update this. She didn't need to redo her kitchen or change her paint colors. Um, this is even an ADA compliant bathroom, which turned out that the buyer, you know, uh, the gentleman had bad knees and he was thrilled with this. This was an addition that she had added because her husband had some problems. And again, they were able to turn this into a playroom for their kids. Um, so those two features actually helped sell the house, right. which was amazing. And we came in early on and we brought, you know, we have a lot of vendor partners and we brought a handyman and I think it was, you know, under a thousand dollars worth of work we had done prior. Um, just some little things that we noticed, you know, that we kind of just got to jump on. So she didn't really do, need to do much at all. Um, and even this blue doesn't show up in the Matterport, but it was really, really bright, bright, bright blue, but it didn't, it didn't uh, deter a buyer at all. Not at all. Not at all. The interesting thing here too is that I think it actually shortens the time frame to mm -hmm. getting an offer and to getting folks in the home because there are some people that might say, nah, that's just not for me. So then they don't come out and spend a half hour or an hour in the home looking through something that they didn't really want. Um, let me just go back here and into, so it does take a little bit to get used to this, <laughs> as you can see. Mm -hmm. If your best bet is to just go to the floors and it'll take you, you know, where you need to be. But there's some cool other features here. There's a floor selector. So you can go to third floor. Mm -hmm. You can go to the first floor, which is the basement. You can actually mm -hmm. take a look around and see what's available here in the basement, how tidy and clean. There's a really cool measurement tool that if you go back to the floor plan, you can actually measure floors, measure spaces, you can see where your furniture would fit. So a lot of times buyers can use this tool to go ahead and see what it is that they want to measure, mm -hmm. like a sofa, like a living room, a dining room, any of those things. So you can see if, some, if a buyer was home looking at this, you know, several times, they could probably make a determination whether they wanted to come, if they wanted to see the house physically or not. So it did eliminate, I think, a lot of showings. And <laughs> But it was funny, the buyers went under contract and they were using this and using it and using it. And they um, would contact, you know, me and say, hey, is Nancy going to leave those sconces? And she's saying, what sconces? Those buyers, they know this house better than I do right now. So <laughs> it was really helpful. You know, they were able to purchase this house, only seeing it for 15 minutes and then go back in. They did have an inspection, but they did, you know, they could use this and figure out you know, what furniture fit or what not. And then the end, um, so Nancy was moving to Alabama to be with her daughter. And in the end, she was having trouble getting rid of some of the furniture, like the dining room, obviously she didn't want to take. And uh, the buyers were able to go right in here and look at it and say, yeah, no, we'll keep that dining room and we'll keep the, there was also a, a sofa bed upstairs that weighed a ton and they ended up keeping that. So it was, this really helped in a lot of different ways that we weren't even aware of, but uh, in the long run, it really helped out. And the measuring tool is very cool. You know, a client can use that to see the sizes of everything in the home. So that's one of the silver linings of what's going on with the pandemic is that we've come up 
with ways to show homes virtually and take that burden off. Mm -hmm. And also too, during uh, the time where we were sort of shut down for about 90 days, we actually put four homes under contract just using Matterport, which uh, to me, I mean, a year ago, we weren't even doing anything like this. That's how quickly it accelerated. So our next slide is contracts and paperwork. And so on that, we could spend a whole day. So I think what we'll do here is just kind of talk about what that is. A listing agreement hires us as your exclusive agents and a fiduciary responsibility to sell your home. The seller's <laughs> disclosure is something that as a homeowner, you fill out to the best of your knowledge to know what's going on with your house. When was the roof recently fixed or installed? Uh, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, all of the systems of the homes, anything that you know that happened during your ownership to the best of your ability. And it's a nine page document. And that's something that Mindy and I would come out and sit through and talk through, or we could do it via DocuSign and, and uh, documents on a computer or a Zoom call and walk and talk you through that. So there's lots of options there. The agreement of sale is your actual offer to purchase your real estate. And we would again, work through that with you. It's a 13 page document and it has things like the price of the house. Inspections are a big thing. Uh, but again, in this seller's market, some buyers are waiving inspections. Some buyers are waiving appraisals and they're bringing the difference in money if they paid more for the house than it appraised for, which is phenomenal and rarely happens. Uh, but in this market, it does. It does. We talked about the use and occupancy. Talked about the use and occupancy. Uh, the appraisal, uh, the again, appraisal, touching on that, is that that if is. the buyer is borrowing the money, they're going to have an appraisal. But in the case of Nancy's house, it sold for 20000 more than the asking. So those buyers said, well, if it appraises for 5000 less or 10000 less, and they picked a number below that 20000 above, they were going to bring the cash. So they kind of said, yeah, I'm not going to let the appraisal stand in the way of getting it. And they fortunately and they had the money to do so. And we had five offers to pull from, and that made the big difference there. Settlement day. The interesting thing here now is that now, is the that seller don't have, seller, to come to settlement. don't have to come to settlement. Everything can be done remotely. Everything can be done by computer. By computer. We have the title we company. Have the title of the money right to your bank. Money right to your bank. Completely yeah. safe yeah. on any yeah. level. Safe yeah. financially yeah. and yeah. safe uh, healthy. So that's something that Mindy and I both say, how come we couldn't do that before? <laughs> <laughs> So silver linings of the current situation, Matterport, which is amazing to show a home, um, DocuSign, Zoom, what we're doing today. You know, we can have a Zoom meeting with Evelyn and with if she had a power of attorney, if she had other folks that wanted to meet Mindy and Brian and say, well, what's, what is going on? I haven't sold a house in 50 years or 60 years. We can have the Zoom meeting with all the people who are responsible or or that Evelyn brings in and says, well, I want you to hear this too. So a Zoom meeting, we don't have to leave the house. We don't have to you know, put ourselves at risk or put you at risk. And then we can do the same for the sale, the settlement. Uh, there are some physical things that have to happen, but we help with that too, like the inspections or the actual physical move day. Um, but this, is, this has become, in my mind, the silver lining where silver lining. it's where cut down the process. It's cut down the process. It's made it actually easier. It made it actually easier. And I would imagine it lessens the stress tremendously for the seller, mm -hmm. not having to come in person and do those trips. And, you know, even if we weren't in a pandemic, um, I would imagine it would lessen stress on a certain level. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I think it's a and good point to, to good point that, to point, to that is point is that our client, Nancy, had three days of disruption. So it was a lot. It was 18 showings in three days but she left the house and she allowed the professionals, uh, the courtesy and, and the trust to bring people in, to be careful and, and clean as we left and make sure the home was tidy and make sure lights were left on and not allowed touching you know, of the home. Um, most people had already seen it in Matterport, so they didn't spend very much time. I think the longest showing might've been a half hour. We'll only schedule one showing an hour and only so many a day based on what the client wants. So it really did take that stress off three days and we were done and a, 
about 45 days later settlement. And a key piece here is that the seller is in control. You don't have to settle when you don't want to. We can do 30 days, 60 days, even 90 days, and the buyer can lock an interest rate in up to about 90 days out. So again, back to Shannon's point, that takes a lot of stress away. Yeah, in, in Nancy's case, because she was moving to Alabama, there were a lot of questions like how, you know, can I get a mover, you know, during this pandemic and all of that. So I was able to get her, you know, in touch with three different movers and packers and the whole time working with the buyers and her and our seller's timeline. And so as it were, I think she moved on a Wednesday, settlement was on a Friday. So she, you know, the movers came, they packed, she moved, she got in the car and went. We had the house cleaned while she was on the road and I went to settlement for her and we were talking on the phone. And so it worked out really well, but the whole time, you know, it was about what she needed. It, her needs were the most important. So, and everybody worked together wonderfully with that. Absolutely. That's yeah. great. And so kind of in closing here, we always say, choose your realtor, kind of like the way you choose your doctor. And your doctor might tell you things you're not thrilled with, right? Like, oh, <laughs> cholesterol or this or that, or don't eat this, don't eat that, that kind of thing. And you're not real happy with him or her, but you do it because you know that they have your best interest in mind. And that's what we have. And, and that's what a realtor and an SRES, the senior real estate specialist does. So we always tell our folks, even if you don't hire us, choose somebody with an educated decision, interview, see if they bring you know, things of value to you, see if they handled like a job interview, bring references. Um, how many transactions have they done? You know, we do about 38 to 42 a year and 80% of that are seniors. So when we tell you something like, ah, oh, you might wanna do the carpets or you may wanna paint this room or you may wanna have our handyman come out and fix the deck, it's really to get more value, more money and get you through the process. We pay for the Matterport which is a significant expense over what we used to do. Photography before used to be maybe $200. This is $600, you know, $400. It's well worth it. And we're more than happy to pay for it. And we've made that commitment that Matterport's the way to go. And I think if you look at the agents who do, you know, 30, 40, 50 houses a year, they're all gonna gravitate uh, towards this Matterport. So you wanna avoid the pitfalls of we buy houses. There's lots of people trying to cash out your house, uh, maybe even prey on seniors a little bit and say, well, you've been there 50 years. You know, they can see what you paid for it in public records and they come in with a flashy kind of cash offer. Um, in this market, it's best to have a professional because I can guarantee you we're gonna get you more than a, than a we buy house. And that's it, an educated decision and someone who cares for you and someone who brings these things to the table to streamline the process. That's really who you want to look for. Mm -hmm. So I can- That's great. Thanks. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was just going to ask, would you, would you when, when people are interviewing a realtor, is there, um, is there a red flag if someone says, you know, oh, I do this as a hobby or part-time or I sell a few houses a year. Do you want to see somebody with that, you know, 30 to 50 a year? Is that a, a good range to feel confident in that, you know, the person is up on the latest technology and information and, and things like that? I'll let Mindy speak to that while I just pull up another screen. Yeah, no, I think, so. I think so, Sean. And I think, you know, and again, I don't want to speak to other agents. You have to kind of make that judgment. You have to, you know, want to work with someone. You want to feel comfortable. But I think, you know, you do want them to be, you know, busy, but not so busy that they don't have time for you. And that's kind of what we pride ourselves on, too, because seniors do sometimes need a little extra time. And we're not in a hurry. We're on your time, you know, we're on your timeline um, and however long it takes you know that's fine and however you know you need to do things so definitely think that you know you don't want you don't necessarily want the flashy one that's going to be in there and out of there just put a sign in your yard and leave like there's a lot more to it and uh, we do right. you know try to get somebody from the beginning to the end and I physically have moved people into communities if that's what it takes. So um, yeah, I think, I think definitely you want to interview someone. It's not always the one that has the most signs out there or the one that has, you know, the flashy car, I think uh, isn't always the right way to go. But. Yeah, and to that point about a red flag coming up, I think the easiest way to sort of figure out who's who 
is handle it like a job interview, you know, and, and that's how we handle it. We bring references, at least 10 of them, and those references are broken down, you know, to professionals and to past clients. And then we also bring production because again, if do you want to hire the person who sold 500 houses? Maybe that's too much. Do you want to hire the person who sold five houses? Maybe that's too little. So what's that spot where you feel comfortable? Um, and we're a team. So a lot of times agents are on their own. We are a team, Mindy and I are partners and we have two other agents and we have an administrative assistant. So again, that job interview aspect is really something and, and a value add is really something too. Um, Oh, you're muted. There we go. Sorry, I just muted myself moving that. I just want to show you one other thing too. This is part of our job interview. These are our professional uh, people that through the senior real estate specialist designation, you know, helped us form a group of folks that can help each other. And there's a developer in there, a builder who can add an addition to a home if needed. There's folks that can help, uh, you know, with just about everything, um, downsizing, cleaning, we also have other guys that are plumbers, electricians, all those things. So we kind of become a one-stop shop. That's such a wonderful, you, you shared this with me a while back and that is such, such a wonderful resource. I know, you know, working in senior living communities, working at PPH, um, you know, people don't have these vendors or resources on hand and why would you? And even, you know, going to look for, you know, someone that can help, whether it's an appraiser, if you want to sell an antique or something like that, or, or you know, remove things that you aren't going to be bringing or donate, um, you don't know if that person is trustworthy. So it's great to have the, this group of people that are committed um, to helping and they're already vetted for you. I think that's just, that's just a wonderful um, value added to the process. Thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure to be that source of the source. And I think, you know, when working with seniors and again, on that personal level of like my mother and my uncle and your family members, you need to start thinking about scams that they almost got caught up in or that you hear about. And, right. and that's the advocacy piece to us is we just don't want that to happen to anybody. Right. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for today. We really appreciate this time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Brian and Mindy and Evelyn. Thank you for joining us. And we can't wait to see you here at PPH. <laughs> <laughs> good luck, Evelyn. Yeah, good luck good with everything. Good All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.